On behalf of the Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 9184 and the Webb County Veterans Service Office, I would like to welcome you and thank you for attending this ceremony. Uh, my name is Staff Sergeant Gon uh, Gilberto Gonzalez. I am the Vice Commander of uh, VFW 9194 and I'm the Army Instructor at Cigarroa High School. Personally, it is an honor to be in front of you and to be a part of this project. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, VFW Chaplain Armando Rodriguez. Good morning. First of all, I'd like to thank God, the Lord, for giving us this lovely morning to be here to honor our special post members and relatives of those that lost loved ones in a war or in a conflict. Lord, please take care of them and bless them. Lord, also, please bless all our special guests that are here with us in celebrating this occasion and, all, and everybody else present in this occasion. Also, Lord, please bless and take care of our young men and women that are serving in the military at this time. Please help them and bring them back home safely. And Lord, please help and take care of this great nation of ours, the United States of America. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Rodriguez. I will, uh, I'm going to ask you to please rise and please remain standing for the presentation of colors led by the Cigarroa JROTC Honor Guard, followed by the National Anthem by JROTC Cadet Aileen Esquivel. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you. That's my battalion commander, Aline Esquivel. <laughs> Next, I would like to introduce our dignitaries. And if I, I can ask him to come up and, and, um, and talk to us. Uh, our first speaker is gonna be Mayor Pete Sainz. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for the invitation. And 
thank you to the organizers and of course the people present here. I, I feel very privileged and honored to uh, being in your presence and of course the presence of the uh, fallen heroes of our city and the surrounding areas. We gather here this morning uh, to honor and pay tribute to the Gold Star Mothers for their personal loss of fallen children in the line of duty. Some say that sadness and grief is a natural occurrence uh, expected from loved ones left behind. That we are born to die, that death is unavoidable, that it comes from we least expected. But I believe our presence here says more. Something innate within the core of our being tells us differently. It inexplicably draws us to the question, why would the death of a fallen hero, a son, a daughter, and the enduring pain and grief of a surviving mother and relatives merit more attention? Is it because it pierces the heart beyond what is natural and ordinary, as difficult as that may be? Or is it because it enters into the transcendent, revealing truth itself and the everlasting, exposing the real essence and value of human love pain and sacrifice for the greater good of humanity and of a nation. Yes, even to the extreme of offering one's life for virtuous ideals, ideals such as that of a mother's love and willingness to offer her life in an instant for her child's life or safety. These ideals are life generating and sustaining bigger and greater than our own life's goals and expectations. Mere words, some may say, yet I dare to say to our fallen warriors, these words took purpose, these words took meaning. These words uplifted and transformed their natural and ordinary tendencies into supernatural, courageous, and heroic actions worthy of even death. And yes, even worthy of the cost of a mother's lifetime of sorrow and heartbreak, all for the greater good of others and the ideals of this nation. Yes, rightfully so. We thank and pay tribute to our fallen heroes for their sacrifice to our nation. But just as importantly, today, on behalf of our city, we, a grateful community, with our hearts in hand, recognize and extend our sincerest thanks and respect to the Goldheart mothers here present and to those others wheresoever they may be. It is my hope that this event, this morning, and the sentiments expressed may bring you healing, may bring you comfort and solace for your great personal loss. But also we hope that you internalize your child's legacy 
and wear it proudly as a badge of honor and pride of his or her supreme sacrifice for God and for country so that we and others may live lives better and that we may value the same ideals that they died for. We salute you always as a gold star mother and I pray that the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you and your families always. Muchas gracias y vayan con Dios. Thank you, Mayor. Next, I would like to uh, invite to the podium uh, representing District 8, Salisa Cigarro. Good morning to our beautiful community of Laredo, to our veterans, and to all of the families present today. It is an honor to be here. Nothing is more important for us to do than to pause from our busy lives and to honor our veterans. Freedom comes at a price. It is not free. And we forget that waking up to a peaceful morning, walking to work, having a stable job, and putting our children to bed and reading them a bedtime story is not a given. There are many parts of the world where there is nothing but chaos and families that are ripped apart by kidnappings and loss of dignity for life. That fortunately is not the case in our beautiful country, thanks to our military, thanks to our veterans, and most importantly, thanks to our soldiers lost on the battlefield. I want to thank each and every one of them on behalf of our city leaders and on behalf of every American. Today we honor the mothers of fallen soldiers at war. They paid the ultimate price, the loss of their, their son or daughter. They carry that terrible pain that only mothers who have lost a child can imagine. And for the rest of their lives, they walk through life with a heavy heart. It is not God's plan for a mother to lose a child. And to each one of you, our country is at peace and safe because of your beautiful son or daughter. We will never forget your loss. We mourn with you, and we, we will honor your child by respecting our country and by raising our children to honor them and to respect them. May God bless you, and thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garro. I would like to introduce next, Precinct 4 Commissioner Cindy Liendo. Good morning. It truly is an honor to be here today, and even though we are here with much pride um, for our fallen soldiers, it is also a very emotional time for so many of you in the audience. I want to start by thanking you, the Gold Star Mothers, for raising your sons and daughters, your sons. I know that today we, we only have sons that have fallen here in our community in combat. So I want to thank the Gold Star Mothers for raising their sons to love our country, to feel that sense of community and pride, honor, and service. And it's something that as you raise your children to want to give back to our community, and once they decide that they want to go into the military and serve our country, I know you think, well, now what have I done? I'm sending my child into into harm's way to serve our country. And it's not an easy thing to do. Um, so I want to thank you for that. In the past, it was a time where we would honor our Gold Star Mothers, um, and it has evolved into now honoring our Gold Star families. And today, that what, that is what is going to be unveiled. It's the unveiling of the Gold Star Mothers and Families Monument. So even though there is no greater pain than that felt by a mother, we can't ignore the fact that the families surrounding 
our fallen soldiers also feel much pain. And I want to thank all of you for being here with us and for having shared your loved ones with our city, with our county, and with our country. In the past few weeks, we have been struggling with the loss of one of our own hometown heroes, Lance Corporal Espinosa. And even though it is a sad time, the pride that we felt in our city, we saw everybody come together expressing um, their gratefulness, their pride, and it was just so beautiful to see. And I want to let um, the family of Lance Corporal Espinosa know that as we attended the services, there was so many families that were talking about their children, nieces, nephews, kids, who were watching the news, hearing about what happened. And these 10, 12 year old, 15 year old kids are saying, they want to follow in his footsteps. They want to go and make our community proud. They want to serve our country. And it's just such a beautiful feeling to know that um, your children have inspired others to serve our country. So I don't think there are enough words to express our gratitude. Um, your heroes are gone, but not forgotten. And there is a, a quote that is by an anonymous source that says, only two defining forces have ever offered to die for you. Jesus Christ and the American soldier. One died for your soul and the other for your freedom. And as council member Alyssa Figueroa said, freedom is not free. And um, we are forever grateful to those soldiers who have lost their lives and to those who continue to serve today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lindo. Next, I would like to introduce uh, State Representative Richard Raymond. Uh, I usually say it's great to be here with you. Uh, but this is such a solemn occasion. You know, we're here because young men, as Commissioner uh, Leandro pointed out, because young men died, gave their lives for our country. You know, the great irony that I've always thought about soldiers when we honor them so many times, when we honor soldiers who died in battle, the great irony that they all died young. They all died young. And so today, this wonderful monument we unveil because of the work of so many. And I thank all of you, our veterans and people like Hector Farias, who's, I've been in representing Laredo for 21 years, and for 21 years, Hector Farias and so many veterans are always on me to do more for veterans or to focus on veterans and to help veterans. And it's because of you all that we're here today. And it's important that we have this monument because Although we honor those soldiers, those young men and women who have given their lives, the pain of their losses will be here until their parents die. And then beyond that for their brothers and sisters and other relatives, because the pain never, never dies. It doesn't. I've lost, I've lost a child now. And the pain never dies. So, Gold Star Mothers, I know it is hard. I know it's got to be hard for you that, and bittersweet, that we unveil this monument for you all, for the strength that you give, that you gave those young soldiers. You raised them right to love this country, to protect our community, to do as in, in that famous, famous poem. Uh, <laughs> where they say ours is not to reason why ours is to do and die. The Battle of the Light Brigade. And that's what these soldiers did. They didn't ask why. They just did, and unfortunately they died. Um, one of the great regrets I have in life, 
when you get to my age, I'm old enough now that I can have regrets. And one of the great regrets I have, I said this on the floor of the Texas House a few months ago, was that I never served in uniform. It's one of my great regrets. I grew up in a little town surrounded by combat veterans from World War II and some from the Korean War. And those guys all mentored me and, and I loved them. And I was ready to go. Vietnam War ended when I was barely a teenager and so there weren't any there weren't any wars going on when I turned 18, so I didn't go sign up, I didn't enlist. But it is one of my great regrets. In part because of that regret, my whole career since I've been in the legislature, 27 years now, I fight for the veterans who fought for us. I fight all the time for veterans who fight for us, and I was very proud that earlier this year, the Speaker of the House called me and said, I want to appoint you to chair the Defense and Veterans Affairs Committee. And it is a great honor for me. And so I, I cannot tell you, after all the years I've spent working with veterans, now being in this position, meeting with veterans even more, and listening to the stories, and all you veterans who are here today that came back, that made it back from battle, you guys never stop thinking about those that you lost in battle. It's amazing to visit with those veterans and to talk to them and how much they, it hurts them they know somebody, one of their friends that died next to them and that they made it back and their friend didn't. It is admirable for me to see that veterans who still live today never stop fighting for the veterans who didn't make it back. And this is a small token today, a very small token. But mothers and families, Gold Star mothers and Gold Star families, we know that this uh, won't do much to ease your pain, but we want you to know how much we love your sons. And the most recent loss in Lance Corporal Espinosa was a big hit for all of us in this community and this country. I wish I could say that we'll never lose another soldier, but we all know better. And so this monument is very, very important. Para todas las madres, para todos los papás, para todas las familias que están aquí este día. Nuestro corazón está con ustedes. Yo sé que este monumento es algo pequeño, pero es nomás para recordarles que nosotros estamos con ustedes. Nuestras oraciones están con sus hijos, sus hijas, y que Dios los bendiga. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Raymond. Next, I would like to introduce, on behalf of Representative Tracy King, District Director Lupita Cepeda. Good morning, everybody. And uh, I am, we are humbled and honored to be here today with all the Gold Star mothers and their families. On behalf of State Representative King, he was not able to be here today, but he does send his love and his prayers uh, all the families, the Gold Star Mothers, and of course all the veterans that have served that are here today. Uh, you've given up, or your sons and daughters have given up a lot for us to continue to be free in this country. And uh, uh, we're here to thank you with this Gold Star Mothers Monument dedication today. Thank you, and there will always be in our thoughts and our prayers, you, your sons and daughters that we have lost. They will always be in our hearts. And uh, thank you again, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cepeda. I would also like to recognize two elected officials that are here with us, our Web County Clerk, Margie Ibarra, and Judge Oscar Hill. Next, uh, I want to invite uh, David Garza. He is one of the ones that made this happen. It's, we have two people here, uh, Ricardo Quijano and David Garza. Without them, this would not be possible. They spend hours, days, weeks organizing all this. And I would like to introduce uh, Mr. David Garza.
as you as you all know, I'm not on the program. But I was just have to say a few words that I was asked. Yeah. And I look, let me start off, sorry. I look in the crowd and I'm honored to be standing here in front of such great people, heroes, mothers, fathers. Most of you or some of you know me and we've had conversations and you all know where my heart lies and what I do, when I do it and, and how I do things. I, I just wanna say that today and this day and this monument is not for me or for other veterans. This is for our Gold Star mothers and their families. This is long overdue. This monument should have been erected many, many decades ago. I can only tell you that our recent loss has brought what I have seen about what I have seen to bring our community together. I've always been proud of being American. More recently, I've been proud to be a Laredo. I can only tell you all, I, I'm gonna pledge that if our Gold Star families want to, and they wish to, we need to have something every year for them and bring them together back to Laredo. I do know there's families that came in from out of town and a lot of them on short notice. So I pledge with uh, the help of Ricardo, wherever, there he is, with that guy right there, <laughs> to do something for our Gold Star families every year and uh, ask what you all would want to do. Um, at the end of the program, if you all wish, uh, we have some of you, some of the phone numbers already and addresses and names, but if we don't and you wish to participate, I would love to take your information down and contact you and stay in contact with you all. Um, it doesn't matter what my job title is or will be in the future, because you never know, but I, I pledge to do this for you guys every year. Thank you. Thank you, David, and thank you for everything that you do. Serving his ninth term in the U.S. House of Representatives, Congress Henry Cuellar proudly represents Texas 28th Congressional District. His legislative principles are based on the belief that education, family values, and hard work should open doors to new opportunities for all Americans. As one of eight children born to migrant farm workers in Laredo, Texas, Congressman Cuellar was raised with a passion for education and an unwavering work ethic as he sought, sought to attain his educational goals. Congressman Cuellar continued support towards the veteran community and their families does not go unnoticed. Congressman Cuellar and his wife, Imelda, reside in Laredo, Texas with their two daughters, Christy and Katie. Please welcome Congressman Henry Cuellar. Thank you, uh, thank you again and to all the uh, veterans David, Ricardo, everybody who have put this together, thank you, thank you so much for putting this together. Uh, today, uh, I certainly joined my friends, uh, uh, Rep. Raymond, uh, Tracy King, uh, the city council, the county commissioners, the mayor, and all of y'all here that are present here today uh, to honor uh, the Gold Star Mothers. Today is about you and your loved ones. That's it, just about you and your loved ones. And it is my distinct honor to honor our local heroes, individuals who have sacrificed their lives for our nation. These soldiers embody the values of families, of selflessness, and the values of what make us Americans. The values that we represent here as South Texans, as Americans, and what we all strive to be. This distinction is not only for our fallen heroes, but it is also about the families. That is why we gather here today to honor all of y'all, especially the mothers of our fallen soldiers. 
And again, I have a list of all the families that are here, post 9-11 era, Desert Storm, Vietnam, and other families. To so all of y'all, we are here for you. Most of us will never know the feeling of losing a family member, much less a son or a daughter to the service of our country. I sit in the House Appropriations Committee where we do the defense appropriations, and I get to talk to a lot of soldiers, not only here in Texas, but across the world. In fact, the last time I was in Afghanistan, I noticed something, because I think somebody mentioned this. They're young soldiers. I remember getting in a C-130, and I got to climb up there and get to see the pilots. And as they said, turn around and said hello, there were young soldiers, young males and young females, young sons and daughters. And that's what we're talking about. And again, we're here to honor y'all for the ultimate sacrifice, not only for that soldier, but to the family. We cannot let this ax go unnoticed, the sacrifice. Nothing will replace your loved ones, and that is a burden that we all share with you forever. Find comfort in your heart knowing that your children and your loved ones are in a better place now, and that here on earth we will always remember them as American heroes. And as David said a few minutes ago, David, we need to continue doing this every single year to honor our gold star parents on that. And I thank you for that. Let me uh, finish with a poem. Because sometimes in the politics, people wonder, should we be in the war? Is that the way we should have exited? Should we, sh should we even start the war? I know there's a politics, I know that. We all know the politics. But let me talk about the soldiers and how the soldiers see themselves or saw themselves. And I will give you a poem, Author Unknown. And it's about making a difference. A chance to make a difference, I guess that is all I ask. To leave a mark in the world with every deed and task. So much goes unnoticed. Yet it is the little things in life to humbly enjoy victory or move on in times of strife. Did I make a difference? Only you would know for sure. Sometimes it's the smallest things that truly do endure. And if you want to make a difference, don't wait. Don't just do it now. And what you need to do is don't wait, but just do it now. Just do it now. You will never want to miss a chance to turn things upside down. And this is what our soldiers have made, a difference. They have made a difference for what we call our beautiful country, the United States of America. So to all of y'all, all, all I say I have the most utmost respect for everyone gathered here. Thank you for your service. Thank you for that special someone service that made you come here today to be here as part of our family. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Cuellar. At this time, we're gonna, we're gonna need the families of Captain Heriberto Garcia and Lance Corporal David Espinosa. Again, I want to thank everybody 
like I said, it was an on, it's an honor to be in front of you. It's an honor to keep working with your families. I know it's an honor for all these people that made this possible, that we, as a community, get together to do, to celebrate you, celebrate your loved one life, and we will continue doing that. We'll continue celebrating your, uh, your loved one's life. Your, serv your service is not in, it, it hasn't ended. Your loved one's service will continue. On behalf of everybody, the VFW 9194, Wood County Veteran Service Office, I want to thank you for being here with us. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you.